Between 17,000 and 2000 BCE, a variety of Neolithic cultures flourished across China. Through long interactions, they became increasingly similar and eventually gave rise to three Bronze Age dynastic states. The first state being Xia, an evolutionary state between the late Neolithic cultures and the urban Chinese civilization of the Shang dynasty. Archaeologists have uncovered urban sites, bronze implements, and tombs that point to the existence of civilization in the same locations cited in ancient Chinese historical texts. The succeeding and more advanced cultures produced pottery and were also jade carvers. Chinese Neolithic pottery was decorated and served both practical and religious purposes. The two other Bronze Age dynastic states were the Shang from 1700 to 1100 BCE and the Zhao from 1100 to 256 BCE. The Shang developed traditions of casting ritual bronze vessels, worked with jade in ceremonial shapes, and wrote pictographic scripts expressing abstract ideas. They were a stratified society and the ruling party claimed power as shamans and were responsible for early writing. And like most cultures that began to use bronze, it was put into weaponry. The next and final Neolithic dynasty, the Zhao, had developed a feudal society, ruling over many small states. Later in the period, those separate states began to battle for supremacy. This collapse of society inspired the first philosophers to question of how to bring a stable society. The remaining states were taken over by Qin in 221 BCE, the next historic period and from where the name China was taken. Qin unified China as an empire for the first time and created China's centralized bureaucracy. He also formed the Great Wall, a city-sized mausoleum guarded by a life-sized terracotta army and a massive national road system at the expense of numerous human lives. He also banned old traditions to ensure stability but was quickly overthrown, ending the Qin Dynasty in 206 BCE, but a unified China remained. During the Han Dynasty, from 206 BCE to 220 CE, China was in peace and prosperity, and trade routes were created from India. Confucianism was made the official state of ideology, and so was Taoism. They concentrated on harmony and on building correct relationships. After the fall of the Han Dynasty, China experienced a period of disunity. The north of China was being taken over by invaders from the north and the west, while the south experienced economic and cultural development and trade routes stretched. Many dynasties after that were short-lived, and many were full of unrest and wars. China experienced its own renaissance during the Song Dynasty in 960 CE, but in 1276, the Mongols, a group of nomadic people from the north, invaded and took over China. The Mongols established their own capital in what's now known as Beijing, but cultural centers remained in the south. This was the start of the Yuan Dynasty in 1280 CE. A man from a poor, uneducated family named Zhu Yuanzang gained power from the help of scholars to drive out the Mongols. He became emperor but grew to distress the intellectuals. The Ming Dynasty was a despotic rule for 300 years but came to end when Manchu armies marched into Beijing in 1644. The dynastic family from the Qing Dynasty were not of Chinese origin so the emperors became Chinese themselves, culturally and mentally. Their rule was a mixture of authoritarianism and paternalism, and the emperors with the reign saw themselves as protectors of the Chinese literature and art. During the 18th century, China was the largest, richest, and most efficient governed state of the world. However, internal problems and external conflicts led to the decay in the early 19th century. There were political and cultural reformations, and the Qing Dynasty were overthrown in 1911 and China was recognized as a republic. And in 1949, China established a communist government.